You know what? We've heard uh, enough stories here at QED about how much rent is in Manhattan and here in Queens, and we never get the other person's point of view, that of the real estate agent. So tonight we're going to have Sarah Furon. She's a real estate agent by day in Manhattan and a storyteller by night. She's on the board of the Irish American Writers and Artists, and she's going to relay the hardships of a real estate agent. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, happy to be here at QED. Show of hands, how many people do not have a real estate license in New York? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The only reason I got into real estate is so I could have a decent shot at becoming president. <laughs> Shelter is a necessity, but it's gotten out of control. Millionaire's Row has turned into Billionaire's Row, where the penthouse views disappear on a foggy day. Let's put the real in real estate. It's not like the reality shows, with mega deals negotiated on a speakerphone at swanky restaurants. We have no scripts or film crews. I got your reality show right here. There's no working from home. I have to be in the home of the client that I'm trying to list, sell, or rent. The word on the street is that everything's negotiable apparently starting with my fee. <laughs> to get a listing or, or to get a deal done, the first request is always to reduce the commission by a percent. The other brokers said they do it for 5% instead of six. Well, I guess 6% 6 of zero is still zero, so okay. <laughs> That total commission gets split with the broker who brings the buyer, then my half gets cut by my split percent, deductions get vacuumed out of my check, the desk fee, referral fee, company attorney fees, company charities, the Real Estate Board of New York annual dues, and that's before <coughs> taxes. So an independent contractor is basically, you pay for everything. Phone, taxis, coffees, lunch, insurance, hours of continuing ed, not to mention tipping, the most essential part of doing business in New York. So originally, real estate, it was about something to fall back on for acting. With the post-pandemic standstill and the sky-high mortgage rates, I've actually been falling back on my acting. <laughs> and there are a lot of parallels with showbiz and real estate. Auditions, call back, get the gig, work on stage, work on the staging, do another show, do another showing, and the perpetually important headshot. I notice out here in Queens that the agents are always pictured on their cell phone. <laughs> which is a sign of doing legit business. <laughs> I still don't get how there are enough apartments for all the agents competing to do deals. I missed out on a really big deal because I didn't recognize the other agent in the lobby because her picture on the website was two faces ago. <laughs> and she couldn't call me because she had the iPhone 15 and the password is facial recognition. <laughs> she also notes on her web profile that she speaks five languages. Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, and a little Staten Island. <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with. I'm seeing a trend in agents who only text and speak in emojis. Are we going to do this whole deal in emojis? It just feels like an all-out war between pre-war co-ops, post-war condos, pre-apocalyptic war rentals that you have to win in a bidding war. And then, after you win the bidding war, it's on to the purchase application, including every bank statement and tax return for the past two years, with copies for each board member, killing at least seven trees, <laughs> then praying for approval from the managing agent so the buyers can advance to a more severe interview than say, oh, I don't know, someone running for office. 
Like everything, it's about relationship. Some are long-term, some are short-term, some ghost you. I get a lot of questions. Is there a fee? Should I rent or should I own? Well, to rent is gonna be $37.75 a month, to own is gonna be $32.25, monthly mortgage payments for 30 years. How long do you think you're gonna live? <laughs> Are there amenities? Is this lead paint? Let me eat a paint chip and I will tell you the exact vintage. If I drop, just call me an Uber. Where do you live? Mostly in the past. <laughs> Can you send me a video tour? Since COVID, everybody wants a video tour. What am I, Scorsese over here? <laughs> Why don't you have more followers on social media? I love millennials who are self-appointed life coaches. <laughs> you need more followers. Followers are your currency. Really? You know who had a lot of followers? Jim Jones had a lot of followers. <laughs> and look what happened to him. Did you get the link I sent you? Stop sending me links to expired listings. Just send me an address and an apartment number. Did you get the link? I sent you a link. Yes. I got the link, and I sent you a link to a video of me deleting the link you just sent me. <laughs> Can we speak frankly about the apartment? I think if we buy, we'd probably sell it in 10 years. Can I speak frankly? You're not gonna be married in 10 years. <laughs> Do you find the building depressing? I don't know, I feel like the lobby's a little depressing, so is the laundry room. And the hallway is so long with that wallpaper pattern, by the time I get through the front door, I feel like I'd be depressed. Maybe you're just depressed. <laughs> Again, I'm a licensed real estate salesperson, not a licensed therapist. But there are three of them off the maisonette in the lobby. <laughs> Can my client come back one more time? I had a cash offer for a new listing on Riverside Drive, contracts went out, and the buyer comes back to check the sound levels because he's noise sensitive and run the bath hot water to make sure it stays hot. He opens the windows wide, he steams up the bathroom with the hot water. The sun is starting to go down. I thought he was gonna order in dinner. <laughs> he's ping-ponging all over the place and he sits on the windowsill and leans back and I shout, watch out, I grab his arm. And he says, you saved my life. So the next day I hear an agent's least favorite words, we're gonna wait. <laughs> we heard about a new strain of COVID and we're just gonna wait till the mortgage rates go down. I already spent my commission. When he passes the building, I wonder if he'll regret it. When I pass the building, I can't help but wonder, what if I let him fall? <laughs> so I've been showing this rental nonstop since the first open house last Sunday. On my way to show for the third time so Karen can measure with her mother, I get an email from the managing agent that my application was not approved and the board turned it down because the dog didn't pass his interview and went over the 30 pound weight limit. I'm sure the dog was codependently emotional binge eating from the couple's anxiety. <laughs> and they just should have started him sooner on the dog goes empic. <laughs> I forgot the key, so of course I have to go to the super and his team. The super and the people in the building always have these Greco-Roman names. The super is Zeus, king of the building. His son is Hermes. Zeus, a uh, Zeus's messenger, also in charge of Amazon deliveries. You got the doorman, Nestor, Hector, Dionysus. They call him Dino, which you can remember by his neck tattoo. <laughs> and there's always Jimmy, the Irish holdout, because before the Greeks, there were the Irish doormen. You got the porters, Angel, Poppy, short for Poseidon. He's in charge of all the plumbing, from the water tank on the roof, through the pipe systems to the basement laundry room leaks. 
Eddie, short for Oedipus, lives with his mother next door, always has the keys, and I had cash. <laughs> Finally, I get in. I clean up the pizza boxes and beer in time for Karen and her mother to walk in on the red carpet of their mind's eye. Of course, Karen's mother asks, is there a fee? Do you have anything similar with more closet space and a home office? Well, that would be 35% more expensive. Is that in your budget? Then the mother delivers the genius in hindsight monologue. I could have had a penthouse in Yorkville for $75,000 in 1972. <laughs> then I gave up a lease on a loft in Soho for $400 a month. My ex-husband passed on a townhouse for a dollar from the city. But it needed a gut reno. Yeah, we all need a gut reno. <laughs> Are you going to put in an offer? The mother is staring in the mirror, and her response to me is, do you think I need a knee lift? <laughs> Who pays the fee? On a sale, historically, it's the seller who pays, but on a rental, it's the tenant. Look. Karen left the city during the pandemic, and now you're looking at a fifth floor walk up for $7,000 a month. So just sign the lease or try another neighborhood called Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always at this exact moment that I'm ready to quit and do something drastic, like get a nine to five job, that I get a text. We have a four bedroom in the Beresford at Central Park West. We're thinking of selling and downsizing. We're meeting agents tomorrow. Can you be here at 10? So I text back, yes. I'll be there. Downsizing really makes sense. Smiley face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of a small apartment is that it's going to seem like a lot of people at your shiva. 